Hey, my name is Clark Kent and welcome to another lighting tutorial. This does not look good at all. Let me try and fix this. We've all been there. We set up a really nice interview. The lighting looks amazing on our camera assistant. Then the client walks in and they're wearing glasses. And then it's just a fight against these really annoying glares. So in this video, I wanna give you some lighting tricks on how to avoid these reflections without having to compromise too much on a cinematic light setup. First off, not all glasses are the same. Some reflect a little bit more, some a little less, depending on the size as well as on the coatings. For example, sunglasses are the absolute worst. So this means just because you figured out a really great lighting setup for one person, the next person walking in with glasses might need a bit more fine tuning. And by the way, I'm not even wearing glasses. These are just some cheap frames I found off Amazon with just glass in them. So I'll just take them off for the rest of the video. My first and probably most important tip is finding the right angle. And the easiest way to do this is just take your key light and just move it around until you can't see any reflections anymore. And usually height is what matters. The higher you get your light source, the easier it is to get the reflection out of the way. Here I did the exact same. I had my key light source right next to me as I usually do on these talking head setups, but by moving it up and angling it towards me in a 45 degree angle, I got rid of most of the flares in my glasses. If your key light source is too heavy or difficult to move around, if you have a separate COB light shining through a diffusion frame, for example, then you can just take a small light tube, a small pocket light, or even the torch on your iPhone, just to find that right angle where your subject is sitting, where the light won't hit the reflection of their glasses. Once you found the right angle to where there's no reflection in your subject's glasses anymore, this might not necessarily be the most favorable lighting anymore. A lot of the times you have to move your key light to so much of an angle that you're creating a lot of shadows on the dark side of your subject's face, for example. So here it comes in very handy to use a fill light. And if you haven't checked out my three point lighting tutorial, you can check it out right here after this video. My next tip is also a big one quite literally actually, because you want to have your key light source as big as possible. And this advice might sound a bit counterintuitive at first, because you might think the bigger the light source, the bigger the reflection will be. And this is somewhat true, but if you do end up seeing the reflection on your subject's glasses, it might just look a bit more natural, like a big window, for example, unlike a small pointy light source, which gets really annoying and distracting really fast. The next advantage of having a big light source is that even if you put it at an angle, you still have a lot of light to illuminate and expose your subject correctly because the light wraps around your subject. Whereas if you have a smaller light source, this isn't as easy. The next advantage of having a really big key light, and that will also transition into my next tip, is that it is a lot softer. When lighting for glasses, we're looking for a really soft light because the frames of the glasses might actually end up creating shadows. And if you have a harsh light source, you will definitely see those shadows. Whereas when we have a really big and soft light, we might not see any shadows at all. And circling back to my point earlier, if you do have a really soft light and we do end up seeing a reflection, the reflection won't be as strong and it will be a lot more pleasing than if we do have a really harsh light source. My next tip is to not only focus on the light that you bring to the table, but also look for other sources of potential reflections on your subject's glasses. And if there are any like practicals in the ceiling or something is reflecting off the glass, you can always just try to block them out. If there's lights and you can turn them off, well, then turn them off. And if there's some other object that reflects off your subject's glasses, then try to cover it. And you can cover it by black duvetine or maybe a flag or even a piece of clothing if you have to. And speaking of clothing, and this not only goes for reflections in glasses, but in general, try to always wear black. Because if you're wearing something really bright, like an orange parker, it might just be more visible on your subject's glasses, as well as in anything else it reflects. So on set, try to always wear black. So now let's talk about some more advanced tricks if you do have time, if you can plan, and if you do have a bit of budget too. Number one, fake glasses. If you're shooting a short film and your subject is wearing glasses, then maybe try to swapping them out for just a frame without any glasses. A lot of the times people won't notice that there aren't actual glasses in there, but you won't have to worry about any kind of reflections if your subject is moving, for example. This obviously doesn't work for an interview with a client. You can't just swap them out with just fake glasses. But if you're shooting a narrative project, then maybe just try to keep that in mind. 
And my last tip, if there's absolutely no way to avoid the reflections, then maybe make the reflections look pretty. On the set of knife outs, for example, they ran into the same issues, or they rather leaned into it. Instead of just trying to remove the reflections, they had some cutouts that looked like old windows and they put them in front of the light sources, so they reflected in Jamie Lee Curtis's glasses, but they actually looked like windows from the building they were in. And here you don't necessarily have to create a big window. Sometimes a transparent window curtain in front of your softbox will also do the trick and it looks, well, like an actual window curtain. You could also take some black duct tape and just tape it in front of your rectangular softbox and therefore creating the illusion of having some window frames. So what I'm saying, if you can't avoid your reflections, try to be creative with it. And here's a little side tip. If you do have the luxury of choosing your softbox, then maybe don't go for a parabolic one and choose a rectangular one instead, because this often looks a lot more natural when it is being reflected than a parabolic one, because unless you're trying to mimic the sun or the moon, a round shape is quite unnatural in an indoor setting like this. Also try to stay away from egg crates, because if you do see a reflection, this is a dead giveaway of this being an unnatural light source. So there you have it. Those were my tips for cinematic lighting without having to compromise too much on our lighting setup. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, then please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. What I would appreciate even more if you were to hit that subscribe button, activate the notification bell to not miss another upload. And while you're already here, maybe check out one of my cinematic breakdowns that I did in the past. And I hope to see you on the next one.